Good, good morning, everyone. I was given a topic that is in season. Easter joy um, amid suffering, amid uncertainty. Earlier, we were worshiping the Lord and the Holy Father. I connected to the Holy Father's recent audience. He was saying, this is the essential task of the church. We belong to the large community of believers who are experiencing this time of the year, as we celebrate these 50 days, a different kind of joy. And we call it the Easter joy. My presentation, or my sharing, is simply first, what is Easter? Second, what is joy? Third, what is special about Easter joy? And then last but not least, how can we put this into practice? Okay, so I, I prepared a few slides so that you can follow you know, with the material I have here. Okay. Okay, we're celebrating Easter, and we all know that this is really about the resurrection of Jesus. We know this because the Gospels tell us that there was an empty tomb and that he actually appeared for 40 days. It's called the Pascha or the Pasch because it's the passing over of Jesus from death to life. And early on in the English language, we have the testimony of St. Bede or San Beda who evangelized in English and this inscribed the month of April, Oistre, dedicated to Oistre month. And that came, that uh, evolved into the Easter celebration. So from, from the very onset, second century, the early Christians were always commemorating this each year. This day that our Lord resurrected to life. They wanted to celebrate it and prolong it for one whole week. And we can call this the Easter Octave. Considered as one day in a liturgical calendar to celebrate all the apparitions of Jesus. And as the evolution of the Easter Octave came about, it was prolonged even to 50 days. Adequate because there is a celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit we call Pentecost which ends the Easter season. If you try to think of it, why Easter is so important for the Christians and how is it manifested? It is in the number of days, really. It is so important we are an Easter people because we are happy people, we are joyful people because we are witnesses, our faith is based on Jesus Christ passing from death to life he has conquered sin and death. And so, it is the most important season. It has the longest number of days. Think of Christmas. You know the song, 12 Days of Christmas, I suppose. There are 12, actually. 12 Days of Christmas in the liturgical calendar. Advent is four weeks, 28. And then a preparatory uh, portion is also dedicated to sift, purify ourselves. Quadragesima, 40 days. Of Lent. Easter is above everything else, on top or, or, or more compared to the rest of the other seasons. So in the in the liturgical calendar itself, it is so important. It is so important to celebrate always the Pasch, the passing over of Jesus from death to life. Each time we celebrate the Mass, and in the year, in fact, we commemorate it even all the more this season. You also see that Easter will be manifested, that joy, in the so many renewals. Easter Vigil, I'm sure you connected online to a celebration, we renewed in fact our baptismal vows. And it's the most adequate season as well when people are baptized. Easter Vigil. They are clothed in white because they now have a new life. Child is no longer a simple child, a human being, an image of God. He or she has become a son of God. And that's a big difference because he has inherited all the promises that are fulfilled in Christ. 
which includes which includes if the child dies he will be forever living in our Lord Jesus Christ everything that from 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 uh, baptism onwards will be connected to Christ when he gets married he will be with a partner and they will be couples for Christ your group you know everything will be connected to our Lord Jesus Christ and so with this three points that I just said you can see that Easter Easter is so important for the Christians it's um perhaps um a, a lot less now compared to the early centuries but we have to revive this because we are an Easter people you know we love talking about positive things we love talking about the good news the gospel we are talking about Jesus Christ's life and he has not left us he has conquered death he has gone back to life okay I, that's what Easter is all about, practically. I go to the next slide. What do you mean by joy? Huh? Well, first and foremost, I think for all of us, it's obvious that joy is a feeling. It's a passion. Or if you want to talk a, a more a colloquial term, it's really an emotion. It's an emotion that has its own specificity. It is an emotion, St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas who was a great theologian in the medieval times, and he was able to organize thought, theological, philosophical, and many others. He said that it involves the possession of something that we love, of a good that we love. It is no ordinary emotion because it's an emotion, he says, that belongs to spiritual beings. The animals, for example, can possess those things that they love, but it remains on the sensual, on the sensitive appetite. The dogs, for example, when they get their bone, uh, they experience a pleasure, but that's not joy. St. Thomas calls it delight. Joy is of a different plane. It is a spiritual pleasure. It's compatible, now understanding that joy is on a different plane, it's a very spiritual, it's compatible with so many other things. You can experience, for example, pleasure, sensitive pleasure, without spiritual joy. The devil will always trick us into this. He will always want us to go into pleasures so that we forego the eternal joy that God promises to us. At the same time, it is also possible to experience pleasure, say as a corollary, and sadness. Our Lord is giving us over Easter a very different type of joy. It's an act, an effect of love. Aquinas would also clarify that when we experience joy, there's nothing really, but it's an effect of people in love. Because they possess that they love, or the item that they love, they cherish it, it's an effect of the virtue of charity. Now, looking at the trajectory of how we define joy, you know this, you know, you know that in order for you to really say that you genuinely love the other person, it's because you have sacrificed. You have given up something. And for the spouses, you have given up your life. So this is compatible, that joy that experience as couples, compatible with painful circumstances through thick and thin, through rich and poor, etc., and many other circumstances in life. Similarly, joy also in the general plane is like this. In the same way as love is, is, is going through or passing through or is experienced even the moments of difficulty and pain, joy is also possible or compatible with painful circumstances. I think you're, you already know where I'm going to because we are experiencing something different, totally unheard of right now. We are enclosed in our rooms. There are people suffering. There are people dying, and there are so many in the hospitals right now. 
there are some relatives and friends of us who have asked for prayers from us. And there are so many people, in fact, also having financial troubles. Can I not be happy during this time? From what I said, from what Saints, how St. Thomas analyzed it, should definitely, it is compatible. It is compatible. Why? And this is the main thing. Because joy is the possession of that good. And for us Christians, for us, that good, the Christian joy, is none other than God. Our joy is based on a very deep reality, very profound. We possess God. I'll elaborate in what now is called the Easter joy in the next slide. But what's so special with the Easter joy? Uh, if joy is a pleasure of good, we always possess God. And how come we have to be happier, quote unquote, during Easter? Well, my brothers and sisters here in this room, it is primarily because it is in this time or during this season that we celebrate that victory. That victory that spells the big difference that Jesus is God. St. Paul would say our faith is possible because Christ has risen from the dead. That victory of Christ over sin and death. Which means for us that we can, as the other Christ, inherit that reconciliation with the Father, with God the Father. We are celebrating that for 50 days. And then, because Christ appeared to us, and you will see it in the readings of the Masses, the readings of the Sunday celebrations, Sunday liturgies, you will hear it being proclaimed and explained throughout this season. There is a new body of the risen Lord, a different one. It could pass through many things many types of matter. It can eat when it wants. It can be with its beloved when it likes. There's a new creation that has already begun. It's a new way of thinking things. And so families, I go to the next point, what's so special? Ever since, families and the communities will radiate, have been radiating with a perpetual and Easter joy born of this reality. Now, I think it's also important when we experience joy, it's not something individual in the church. It's not something isolated. So our joy is shared in the family. Now think of this because we are in an enforced, we are forced to spend time in the family space. And it's a great opportunity with the people we love, with the people we enjoy to be with, likewise, to experience the, this Easter joy. Far from ignoring and being a very important point, this is the last, the third point. First point is this, and then second, it's about the collective. Last point, it's also important because some people would think of us, they would accuse us, you are being naive in the situation. You are ignoring it. There are so many people suffering, why do you rejoice? It is precisely, sorry, not discovering, discovering that the Apaska joy, Easter joy, comes from the cross and its fruitfulness that makes us so happy. The Easter, okay, and this is what I wanted hopefully to, to, to uh, how do you, um, uh, make this very clear. The Easter did not change so many things in the lives of the apostles. Bowie was already um, alluding to it earlier. No? Um, they encountered difficulties. They were being harassed by the authorities. They also were persecuted and many died. With the exception of St. John of the Twelve, Matthias replacing Judas, they all passed, dying for Christ. They experienced discrimination and many other things. They experienced uncertainty. They experienced financial crisis, etc. But... They experience joy because they already saw that in these difficulties, there is merit. They can identify themselves with the cross of Christ. That is why Easter is so happy for us. It's a happy time for us because although we will have difficulties and we are having difficulties right now, we know that this difficulty has its meaning, has its depth, has its profound connection with the cross of Jesus. So. If you are having some uh, difficulties right now, and you've heard of them, 
you know, I, I, I'll share with you, I, I, as a priest, I hear of a lot of suffering. You know, and I, I, I really suffer. You know, I, I suffer and I pray for the Lord. I immediately go to the chapel. I have an oratory here or a chapel in my house, center focus day, and I tell him, uh, especially when somebody died, you know, I was about to video call one to encourage him because he got COVID. Uh, we were supposed to meet, you know, but it's not easy to meet these days. I continue meeting people, nevertheless. And he died before we had the video call. So I almost cried. <laughs> I went to our Lord and I told him, you know, take care of the soul as it journeys towards you. Now, if you hear of these things, we will not be naive to them, but we know, we already know, that they can be turned into something divine, something holy, something that connects us to God. These sufferings will already identify us with His Son. They are loving caresses of our Father God. Okay, more practical, Father. Um, uh, how can we practice what you just said? I, I have some suggestions here. In Christ, we have that joy. We already know that He's alive, that He is present here in this world. Okay. He has ascended the Father, yes, but He will not leave us. And that He has given us His Spirit. We will celebrate this later on 50 days, Pentecost. We know that we can be other Christs. And this Easter joy has a consequence. And this is how to, um, to be very happy as well. It's, um, it's quite interesting. It's like one is the effect of the other. We will be happy with the risen Lord and we will be able to do this. But at the same time, in doing these things, we will be able to obtain also a deeper sense of joy. Okay. One, we help one another. So um, they, the children, they feel very happy when they have given something to the others. Now, if we want to deepen in that Easter joy, we have to make sure we give something to the others. In the same way as the children experience that joy, you and I will also experience joy during this time of suffering when we have given prayers. And for those who can, and I think many in this room, we begin something really to help the needy. In terms of funds for vaccination, in terms of support for the parish, many other creative ways. Second, this Easter joy leads us, and we could be very happy also with this, when we listen. Yes, I've attended several lectures on this. It is not the same, definitely, to be virtually connected to each other and in person. Sometimes we have to renew it um, through creative means. No? We have to see each other as well in person. But... This technology that we have right now enables us to listen to one another, to listen to each other's difficulties, stories, and many others. Our Lord Jesus Christ, for example, experienced a lot of joy every time he listened to the apostles. When he listened to Jairus, for example, who was in need because the daughter was dead already, he listened to him and he went to his place, this officer of the synagogue, he raised her up. And the apostles believe, etc. Many all those miracles. Third, through the Easter joy, we're able to love with the same love of God. Now, this is a bit challenging. This is very difficult, perhaps. How can we love? How can we love during this time? I understand when persons are different, including spouses, <laughs> including those persons here there will be tendencies for clashes. There will be tendencies for, or possibly this, of, 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 uh, or wanting to divorce. I've heard of so many households. They're thinking of divorcing already because of the pandemic. Because they, they live with each other and you see, you magnify the defects of your spouse. Definitely, you're a human being. Now, understanding that the Easter joy as well has given us the great love of God, you and I can also live Easter joy by trying to understand, to turn a blind eye, to close your eyes to the evil, that tolerating the defects of one another. And in this way, 
we will be able to love. Preparing ourselves that when we go out, the Holy Father was in, uh, adamant to this in his letter, encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, you know, all brothers. We can, we can enclose ourselves in this time and be very sad, isolated among ourselves. So the Easter joy would help us to love each other and loving each other would also give us joy. Try to think, try to think of your children as well as I say this. Because many of them, I continue to talk to teachers now, Southridge. They are mentally challenged during this time. I think what would sustain them, boys and girls, is the affection that you, you show them. These are very difficult times. You cannot imagine if we pass through this during our, um, our childhood. Now, but with your love, with your creative ways of interacting as well, I think they would go through this, this difficulty. Serve, fourth point, we serve with the sentiments of God. We have the image of the Holy Father here without choosing anyone. The image of the Holy Father embracing the deformed person. Holy Father, uh, the, the, the Lord, washing the feet, even of Judas. I would not elaborate on that because there are many ways of serving at home. How do you, how do you experience joy? No, you serve your spouse. <laughs> you serve your children. You serve one another. You serve the others in the community. Uh, okay. We see ourselves, and this is also um, something we discovered already earlier, in this new world. We think of good things these days, and Easter joy allows us to contemplate these new realities. Consider heaven in your conversation with Jesus, often during these times. Think of the new man that you will be, your best self. You're capable of being that. Last but not the least, this is more in-depth. We see life from the depths of God. Easter joy allows us to see things differently with a supernatural outlook. Things will pass. He is in command. He is in control, as the Holy Father has told us already last year. This is a storm. This is an uncertain uh, of a certain duration, but it will end. And Easter already showed us who's the winner. It's God. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. We need simply to allow ourselves. To, that we be worked upon by him. We abandon ourselves, especially this time, knowing how or what are those exact things he would suggest to us in specific. The Holy Spirit will whisper us if you allow him that he talks to you what exactly you would do to maintain the Easter joy. Thank you so much, Father. Actually, the time went by. We didn't really notice that it was 30 minutes. It was perfect, actually, the length of time. Okay, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> okay, um, are there any questions out there for, from anyone? Father JP, I like what you said about um, joy at the end of the day means um, possessing God. Joy at the end of the day is God. So having joy is having God. Possessing joy is possessing God. And... Um, uh, I did a Bible study also before with the ladies and we talked about, we studied love. And at the end of the day, after the study, it's also like that. That was my reflection, that love at the end of the day is God. So I was wondering, I, I texted Ness. So, because, so how is joy different from love? If at the end of the day, God is love and joy, sorry, God is love and God is also joy. So there. <laughs> yeah. uh, yung, uh, earlier, I also quoted this uh, great theologian, Aquinas, who was mentioning all these classifications. He was saying, actually, it's an act or effect. It's the thing. It is love from a different perspective in this way. Mm. So knowing that you're possessing this beloved or this good is joy itself. No? It gives you a different uh, impulse. Love, on the other hand, is that other one, otherness. Uh, your dealings encompasses so many other acts because love, in fact, would include so many other things. It's not only the possession of him, the possession of her, it also includes service. Oh. It also includes doing many other things for him or her. 
No, but when you look at, I think, no, from a one eye glance, no, what you feel, that emotion that you feel when you have that beloved or that good, that is joy. So it's a component of charity. That's how Saint Thomas Aquinas is classic. Okay. Thank you, Father. Will we have a question for Father? Okay. Go. Oh, all right. Yeah, but Father. Um, what's your recommendation, like you were telling, you were saying earlier, you know, with uh, during this pandemic and the lockdowns, um, everyone's all at home, diba? especially those that have a lot of kids also. And the magnify, like you were mentioning, the magnify all the faults and all the, you know, uh, problems with one another. What's your recommendation on how to keep the peace in ano? In, in the house, especially for for, ano, for, the, for the kids of varying ages. And Chamfre also with them. Especially that, especially that. Yeah, okay. Uh, normally, yung, ano, the cause of conflict of children, in my short experience, is mababaw. No? Um, they are items because of personality concerns, or because of interest, or because of envy. Yun yung mataas. No? So, um, my recommendation is try to elevate them to a different level each time. Meaning, something common, a conversation that would make them think out of the box or out of their own world. It's a way of distracting, yes, but it also would make them so united. A common thing that could help them talk about, for example, a movie. A movie that unites them, that they both like. No, meaning uh, we seek common interests during these difficult times of showing or, or, or realizing the differences. No? I said there are many things that unite us. And among children, even among spouses, no? you have differences definitely, but there are so many things that unite you. Go into those. Go into those. No? Um, your good memories, for example... <laughs> Nostalgia, you know, in, in this uh, situation or scenario we're experiencing, we need positivity, we need good thoughts. You know? And I think the Lord also wants us. I say we will tend to really, you know, as uh, human beings with uh, concupiscence and all, you know, evil tendencies, we can really um, be very uncharitable. And when there's somebody uncharitable, it destroys really peace. Uh, so to, to win that person is to go, approach, and then something that unites you with him. Uh, if it turns out to be kids disagreeing, uh, disagreeing, uh, disagreements, no, seek what unites them: a different topic or a, an elevated conversation about ideas, perhaps. Because mahal naman simple lang yung pag-aaway nila normally. Applies to, ano, it applies to the spouses. Mababa rin madalas. <laughs> I, I may experience. Mababa pag-aawayin nyo, pinag-aawayin nyo. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's the nature of, ano, of love, I think. <laughs> you will fight over simple things. Okay. There's a question Thank here, you. Father, um, yeah. that was posted. And the question is, Father, what advice can you give those people who have momentary absence of joy amidst everything that is happening? And second, for those people who experience major losses due to death in the family, what advice can you give for them to hopefully quickly return to becoming Easter people while in yeah. this most difficult time in their lives? Yeah. So um, there was a word that I, I love there, momentary. No? Momentary absence of perhaps the joy or the pleasure no? in something. So what can we say to those people na parang they, they, they lost it? No? They lost the joy and peace. Um, the first uh, thing really is, um, sorry for saying this because I'm a priest and, and I really discovered this, the, the solution, it's, it's our Lord. It's our Lord, no? Um, a connection with Him. A connection with Him somehow could keep the ball running. Because uh, joy is a gift. Eh? It's, uh, it's in fact called in theology a fruit also of the Holy Spirit. Eh? The fruit of the Holy Spirit. There's some grace there. So um, if a person seems to be uh, absenting, uh, meaning lacking joy, 
let's pray for that person. And same time, in one way or the other, if he's a kid, one Hail Mary or one Our Father you know, that he tries to connect. And then second, second, um, I, I think I detect you know, in the question, these are children or adolescents, um, I would recommend uh, that they rest in the real sense. I say they are fatigued right now with online. You know, it, it changes the way their way of thinking. You know, and, and actually, it's not restful for them. Even if they're playing games already, it's they're stressed. And they always say, I'm stressed, I'm stressed, I'm stressed. Now, I'm depressed. Later on, they will say, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. So um, learn how they could rest creatively. Now, very, very difficult. It's very difficult because they are addicted to it. I know. Each uh, mother or father, I guess, we have to find ways so that they could rest in a different manner, not online. Okay. Um, and second, uh, those are my practical advices, but of course, this is very difficult. No? If it's an adult, if an adult, normally I would recommend, aside from prayer, consultation, consultation with uh, or advice from somebody who has some dedication or commitment to the spiritual life. You know, a conversation where he could open up normally helps. I said that's that sense of joy that is lost points towards that. You know, what is it that he lacked? What is the good? He, he doesn't realize that he has God or he has the potential of having God. If there's a lot of guilt, then there needs to be a confession. And in the meantime, for now, an act of contrition that will give him peace. Sometimes it's a pre I, I encourage him. Let's say an act of contrition now because. Your parents won't allow you to come here. Okay, let's act of contrition. And then you know that grace is there. And sometimes also professional advice could help, could be of help. Now, if it's a momentary that is prolonged. Okay, um, now second question. Those people experience major losses due to death in the family. What advice can you give for them to hopefully quickly return to become Easter people when this most difficult time in their lives? Actually, this is, no, no, no. Uh, there's no easy answer to it. No, um, when we experience, a fr or we have the, the, the friend who experienced death, uh, we cannot say the time of grief or the duration of it. We cannot uh, really uh, put it in a box. It has to be one month or two months. It really depends. So the best way, I think, for us is to accompany the one who grieves. Okay? Um, and just that, pray that they overcome it. There's no shortcut. Eh? Sometimes the grief will always even pass for two years. No? And, 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 and sometimes talking about Easter joy, hammering the idea to him or her, it's not the way because it turns him off. No? You, you talk about uh, good things all the time and then um, it's creatively accompanying or walking with him or her or with the couple. And there's no easy solution to that. Sometimes it's just talking about something sometimes um, interacting. I, I know Southridge families who interact these days. They trust each other and they gather. They gather after vaccinating or whatever they, they, they meet. No? But very few, very few families are meeting together. Anyway, so there are ways I think the, uh, which um, needs a bit of creativity these days. No? Returning for the person who have lost um, beloved one, loved ones, no? uh, I think there's no easy answer. We just have to accompany them and pray that they they could return. They could return. The Lord is so gracious, so good. He helps them. No? And the disciples of Emmaus, if you recall that, that episode, they were downcast. That's the gospel of tomorrow. They were down. They could not see Jesus. And for those souls, I think what really is necessary is Jesus goes to them and makes them realize that He is walking with them. We cannot do it ourselves. No? It has to be Him, our Lord. Thank you, Father. That's most help helpful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>